title of the message, Who Do You Serve? Deuteronomy, chapter 30. I'll read it from several translations like I do. This is a a, uh, New Living Translation. We'll just read through a couple. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death. You know when this was written, on that day, today is still that day. Today. It's now. The Bible says, I've given you the choice between life and death. God didn't put um, death on anybody, but he shows the way of death, and you can choose uh, that if you wish. Choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life, that you and your descendants might live. See, that's what God wants. He wants us to live. God's the God of the living. Choose to love the Lord your God and to obey him and commit yourself to him, for he is your life. Then you will live long in the land the Lord swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God's word says, I call on heaven and earth as witnesses today that I've offered you life or death. There's an offer. There's an offer that we are given each day from God. The Passion, uh, the Amplified says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live and may love the Lord your God, obey his voice and cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell on the land, clinging to the Lord today. And the New Living, second edition, New New Living Translation says, I've given you the choice between life and death. Mm. Verse 20, you can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. So each person, each day of their life is given a choice to choose to go the way of the Lord. If we turn to Joshua chapter 24, The end of that chapter. Let's just start this back up to about halfway through verse 13. And we'll go through to near the end. I gave you land you had not worked on. The Lord was speaking to the people. Verse 13, Joshua 24. And I gave you towns you did not build. The towns where you are now living, I gave you vineyards and olive groves for food, though you did not plant them. Remember when they came through, um, delivered by God's mighty hand from the Egyptians out of slavery into um, the desert through the Red Sea, enemies destroyed, out into what should have been an 11-day journey uh, to the Jordan, and then they would have crossed the Jordan River victoriously, the same as they went through the Red Sea and then in there and started taking the land. But of course it took 40 years because they just kept rebelling and whinging and complaining. And God sustained them and gave them manna, but it wasn't his best. So many times just because we see something happen uh, in our life or in the life of someone else or even in the Bible doesn't mean it was God's best. It's there for our learning. And uh, it is dependent upon the choices of the people. And the life that we live, end up living, can take time to get into God's perfect purpose and will the quality of it depends on the choices we make so he said I gave you all this but you didn't do anything I just gave it to you so because of that because you got it all free he's, he's telling them what to do they didn't earn it, they didn't build it they didn't plan it, they didn't grow it he said it's yours though take it see the enemies have gone into the land God wanted to cleanse the land Give it to the rightful owners. Satan stolen lots of things and inheritances from God's people and God wants us to go and take it. Take it back. It's not stealing. It's just taking back what's yours. So, but this is what he said. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. 
Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, or familiar uh, translation King James says, as for me and my house, my house of my family, we will serve the Lord. It's interesting, I knew I was going to share the scripture uh, this evening, and Rod came in bounding in tonight, and as for me and my house, we're serving the Lord, he said. Over there. I said, no, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> we certainly are. And it's a choice. But it's not just a once-off choice, it's a, it's a daily choice. Paul said he died daily, died to what? Died to the things that God doesn't want and lived for the things that God does want. Fearing the Lord, that's what fearing the Lord is. Delighting yourself in Him. Choosing His way. Choosing His purpose, His thoughts. We may not even like it and enjoy it at the start, but because of love, love the Lord your God and choose His way. It's like the, the, the lovers that get together. They, they choose to do it the way of the lover and vice versa because that's what works. You go their way, you do what they like, they'll respond. The lover responds with love and does what the other lover likes, they respond. And it's a wonderful union. But Satan comes between that love because they don't respect each other anymore and they criticise each other and run each other down. And don't do the very thing they did at the start by serving one another, loving one another, doing what the other likes. What happens if you start doing what the other person likes? You'll end up adopting that way and you'll end up liking it as well. Um, It's about becoming one. And many of the things that we do that we like, God may not like. We have to learn what God likes and learn what he dislikes and start conforming to that. But it's still a choice you don't have to. God doesn't force anyone to choose his ways. He said, I said it before you, life and death, choose. He gives, he gives us a pun at the end without reading all the way down. He says, choose life. <laughs> yeah? If you want, to, want some advice, choose life. End of Deuteronomy chapter 30, just read before. So turning to John chapter 14, we'll read a couple of scriptures there. What is this loving the Lord? What is this choosing life? Now, I read these scriptures a lot in my younger days when I was... When I was a baby Christian, I, I learned some of these scriptures and just meditated them a lot because I wanted to love the Lord. And I think it is in the heart of hearts of a believer, God puts a seed in there that, that will grow if you feed it and develop it. But if you let it die off, um, you'll just become worldly again and, and forget the ways of God. But if you seek after him and go after him and just give more and more and more of that to him, you'll grow. Feed more and more of his life into you through obedience, through studying, through scriptures. You'll learn more about the ways of God and you'll develop more of a desire for it and you'll grow. Some of these were the scriptures I, I went to. Verse 21, those who accept my commandments, Jesus said, and obey them are the ones who love me. If you want to know who loves God, you know, look for the ones that do what he says. Because they love me, my Father will love them, I will love them, and reveal myself to each and every one of them. So if you love God and go after Him, He's going to start making Himself real to you. I love what the Amplified says, we'll turn to there. The person who has my commands and keeps them, or obeys them, clings to them, is the one who really loves me, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father. So if you love Jesus, you love the Father. The Father accepted as you loving Him, because they're one. And I too will love Him, and will show, reveal, manifest myself to Him. I will let myself be clearly seen by Him and make myself real mm-hmm. to Him. So it's, it's about choosing God's ways and going after Him. You may not even understand what you're doing much. You're just following. Uh, it's a little bit blind at first, just keeping the commands, going after God the best you know how. He's going to start making Himself known to you and real, and it'll become easier. Judas, verse 22, not Iscariot, not the rascal one, just the other Judas. Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself and make yourself real to us and not to the world? These disciples are really quite funny. He just said how you do it. Now he's asking, how do you do it, Lord? How do you do it? How, how, how? He just said, if you love me, give my commandments. I'm going to make myself known to you. Now he said, but how are you going to reveal yourself, Lord? So he says it again. Jesus answered, if the person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching. And my father will love him. We'll come to him and make our home, abode, special dwelling place with him. Him or her. With him. Right? 
So he says it again, but in a slightly different way. Now that we can get asked the same thing two times, three times, four times, and there's usually a limit on before we start losing it. I just told you how to do it. Have you done that? I just said. Jesus just says it again. The Bible says in James that if we ask for wisdom, he's not going to upbraid us. He's not going to say, you, you dingling. You've been asking me that every day of the week. He said, if you ask in faith, no doubting, he'll, he'll show you. He'll give you the wisdom. He's a patient God is. Yeah. It's good news, you know, because we do our, we repeat ourselves a lot. Not just old people, young people do too, repeat themselves. You tell the child what to do and then they look at you again and go, why? Just explain it all again. You want me to explain it again? Yeah, but why? Do that to God, he won't get upset though. Very, very patient. As long as you're sincere. If you want to know, he will sincerely show you. If you don't get it this way, he'll show you another way, another way, another way. Many facets, many ways of learning. Jesus said, look, what I'm going to do is not just me, but the Father's going to come and love you. And we, 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 sound like Mr. Bean, eh? We, learned Russian, didn't he? We, 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 will, French, was it? French Bean. Mm. We will come to him Make our home abode special dwelling place. Let's look at another translation. New Living says, My father, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them. We will come and make our home with each of them. Doesn't matter who it is. I'm looking for the passion here. Here we go. Loving me, Jesus said, empowers you to obey my word. So you set your heart to love God. He'll give you strength and grace. That's what grace is for. My Father will love you so deeply that we will come to you and make you our dwelling place. Isn't that amazing? In my Father's house are many dwelling places. And we know there's mansions in heaven. We know there's homes and streets and gold. And dwelling places. But he said, we're going to make you our dwelling place. You and I. Us dwelling temples where he'll come and live and settle up inside and make himself known to us. Friends forever. I used to think, oh God, you know, I just want to get close to him, get close to him, get close to him, close to him. It was a desire in my heart and it still is. But it's more or as much as the outward getting closer. I hope I've got a nice spot close to the throne. It's, well, he's, he's already in there. He's much closer than any spot I could creep up to. You grow within, and you also grow externally as well. He, you grow with your understanding of him inside. It's called God inside-mindedness. Becoming God inside-minded. It's a renewing of the mind to get that. We're growing in that. And it's also an external knowing. Learn, learning about him from his creation, from each other. You know, we can learn a lot about God just... Just living in the world. Mm. Just, just walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm. Fearing no evil. Resisting all the evil. Little batting eyes. You know, innocent little you know, lady like that with a sweet little apple. I should just go over and see her. See how she's going. See what the foxy mama's up to. Before long, they'll be wandering off down another path. You know how it works. Set before you. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. Choose life. Choose this way. Choose God's way. It's a choice. So we have to wise up and start learning the ways of God, understanding the ways of God. We've been talking about this for some months, probably the last few years, but especially the last few months, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Meaning way, way higher. King David prays prayers like, you know, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. That doesn't mean just let's climb a hill and meet Jesus. It's, it's a higher way of thinking. Lead me to that way of thinking which is higher. God wants us to understand him, but we have to be taken by the Spirit and given revelation. God is spiritually discerned. His ways are spiritually discerned. They're not understood in the natural ways very easily. 
How do you explain a fourth dimension when we only live in a three-dimensional world? This way, that way, up and down. But there's another dimension. Well, how does that work? Then there's a fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth. It's not reasoned with the natural faculties. It's spiritually discerned. So we have to start learning the ways of God so we can get to know Him better, understand Him better, develop a relationship with Him. He'll come down and meet us, but we're going to have to come up to Him. He'll meet us. It takes a lot of trust in the unknown to get to know God. That's what's been so crafty, I believe, in this generation called the generation of the time of the end, the lukewarm generation, the time of iniquity, of great deception. Because you don't need to understand to follow. For a child to follow a parent to safety, they don't even have to know where they're going. Just follow. Don't touch that. Now, they might ask why. But if the child's too young, you don't need to know why. Just, just obey, right? Hey, should that? Yeah. And make one or two mistakes and realise it could get you hurt. Ch- children learn to follow the leader. Special forces train their people up really well to follow instructions without understanding. They do it on purpose. So they have not got a clue. They don't know the reasons. They don't need to know the reasons. Just obey. They're taken through all sorts of tests and trials. And in the end, they learn to trust the commander because they realise that the commander will always has their interests in mind and will get them to where they're supposed to go. But if they link to their own understanding, they'll end up going somewhere else and getting hurt or miss the path, and it's just going to be very difficult. Following God takes a lot of trust. But we've been brought up in the world to trust our reasoning senses, our thinking. This is why the education system really um, needs reforming. The education system started, was started, this formalised topic education system was started by Christians uh, with the Bible. And of course there's lots of things you can learn. Learn how to build a house, learn how to you know, make carpet and all sorts of stuff in this world. You can have schools for, for all sorts of skills and trades. But there was an education in the Word of God which expanded the mind to comprehend God's ways and purposes and thoughts to understand what his destiny is for the individual so that they can now go down that track and find the education they need down that, 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 that track down there. But what the education does is just fills the mind up with a whole lot of um, stuff that's probably never going to be used. So you end up coming out of school with, hopefully, uh, heading in the right direction in many cases. I think the average person goes through about three jobs, three different changes these days before they find what, what they're happy doing. And some never find it. Much, much fewer find what they're good at and go after their gift very, 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 very early in the piece. Uh, it's a lot rarer. The enemy has a way of having people go after the wrong thing. They might go after money, follow their parents' wishes because, well, you don't want to do what I did because you'll end up, end up broke. We want you to succeed. The, the intentions might be there but because of the education, you end up going in the wrong, wrong place. So if we're going to get to know God, we're going to have to find out his thoughts and his ways and a little bit blindly follow. You know, you can listen to the words of God. You can have the word playing. You can read the word and not really even understand it, but just feed it in there, feed it in there. I've even noticed the behavior of Max, our dog. It's crazy. He's a dog. But when I'm reading the word and meditating the word, the dog, the dog is always at total peace. Total peace. If I'm, if I'm quiet, he might be sleeping and yawning. If I'm, if I, if I'm reading the Bible out loud, he generally uh, <laughs> comes alert and he wants to chew on something. He's just excited. But at peace, peaceful. Not wanting to go outside, not wanting to bark at anything. There is life in the words that God wants to get in us which will eventually become a picture. There's life, there's power in the words of God that will become a picture and a template that you can understand and follow. I don't believe it was God's intention just to have the word written in such a way that anybody could just read it and follow it because 
It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, it says in Scripture. Meaning, there is truth in the Bible, but it's not on the written pages. There's history there, there's things you can learn, you know, facts in life, what an adulterer is, what one isn't. There's simple things, right? The Ten Commandments. But when you're talking destiny, when you're talking the ways and the heartbeat of God, it's found beneath, deeper down. So he says, those secrets that he reserves for friends, for those that really love him and want him. Remember he said, if you go after me, you're going to... He'll reveal and make himself known to you. For those that love me, those that obey me. You start obeying even though you don't really understand why. Meditate the word day and night. What do I want to do that for? Just to do it. Just start doing it. Start meditating it. Thinking about it. Speaking it. Confessing it. In front of the dog. In front of the missus. To yourself. Mata, mata, mata. Bring him in. I used to carry a Bible around in my pocket. Before all the electronic Bibles on the phone and most of my Bible readings on the phone. Sometimes I open the scriptures. But it's just, I'll just, it's just at the fingertips. Scroll through all the translations. And if someone said something that wasn't scriptural, I'd bring my Bible in. And uh, they found out that I was a Christian, a preacher, and many of them, I think the enemy sent them my way, to discuss the Bible. I don't believe there's a Holy Spirit. I says there is too. Father and son, nothing about spirit, and I said, what's this thing? <laughs> and I'd, I'd argue over the Bible, see. The Bible calls that foolishness. <laughs> Arguing over scriptures. Yeah. So rather than just think, oh, fair enough, you just turn the Father and the Son, and don't worry, the Spirit will just come along. Just give them some wise sort of, <laughs> let them gnash their teeth and walk off. I would argue. And I'd have a scripture for everything. Because I just loved the Word and I just got into it. But it wasn't for that purpose. It was to grow me up, not to, not to make me a, a, a mouthpiece of uh, strife. That's all it was. just a, ended up being an argument yeah, with everyone. I'd have an answer for everybody. Those that come to the front door, the Kingdom Hall people, Jehovah Witnesses that come to the door. Yeah, and uh, some folks couldn't stand it. I'd see it as a challenge. So I'd challenge them. But the trouble is that duck under the water, they knew the Scriptures too, see. They pop up over there and I think, dear God, I'm talking about this. Now you pop up over here. <laughs> well, this is what the Bible says. So I get the Bible out again. This is what it says there. Look, look at this. Yeah, but it doesn't say that in our Bible. I said, that's your Bible's wrong. My Bible's right. We'd argue again. Just always arguing. Always fussing with other people. That's not God's will. His word's not for fussing. His word's for instruction, instructing in righteousness, for building us up, showing us the way. I set before you, you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. So choosing the way of God is not necessarily understanding it. It's just going after it and doing it, and understanding will come. Get wisdom first, the Bible says. Get wisdom. If the wisdom of God is study the Word, study and just meditate it, just, just do that. Just be wise. Just be a wise Berean. The Bereans were called wise Bereans because they always searched the Scriptures all the time. Even if they didn't understand them, they were always searching the Scriptures, trying to find out the truth. It produced wisdom in them. Understanding will come down the road. Understanding will come. Get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. You can get understanding, but you've got to get wisdom first. Yeah. Wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah. Wisdom is in the Scriptures. The wise man builds his house on the rock, on the Bible, on the Scripture. So just keep building it. Keep feeding it in. Keep studying it. Keep thinking about it. Listen to teaching, preaching, concerning the words. It's going to start to build a picture in you. Understanding will come. Oh, man, now I see. Now I see what he means. It's a process. And it's a process that you have to just keep at and not give up on. And God's going to start to reveal himself and make himself known to you in the way that he chooses. So I think it's Psalms 31, 32, sometime, somewhere through there, where those that fear the Lord, God will teach that person in the way he chooses to. So fearing God for you may mean you, you follow the scriptures, you do what it says, he may be leading you in a certain pathway, right, to do with, to do with you, to help you through some of your weaknesses. And, and strengthen up those areas. As you do that, he's going to do it in a way, and we start revealing himself to a way, to you in a way that you understand. For some, they're very visual people. They've got to have to see a vision or dream. They're always dreaming, always dreaming and seeing God and seeing visions and seeing angels. For some, that they they see him through life circumstance. They see God and understand him and comprehend him through creation. Some are tuned and they hear his voice, his sweet voice, and they start to learn that voice. There are different ways that you learn, but he's going to start leading you and guiding you to an understanding of who he is as you do those things he's asking and requiring you to do without even understanding why. 
Just do it. Hallelujah. See, that's what you do. Dad said, you got to plant the seed this month of the year because that's when you do it. And the moisture is right. You stick your finger down there. And not, you need to wait a bit longer. It's too wet. You need to get your finger not sticking. Oh, there you go. Quick. Get the tractor ready and get them seed in the ground. Why is that, Dad? Because now's the time. See, your fingers, the mud's not sticking there. It's, you can, we can drive over it. We can stick the seeds in there. And you go and put all the seeds. And then a week or two later, till they start coming. Learning to farm without knowing why, the why will come. The understanding will come down the road. And then you can teach that to others too that don't understand. You don't have to wait and get to the end of your life and go to hell to realise that I made a wrong choice. You can see hell's everywhere. It's all around us. You can see the destruction that is caused in this world, the wars, the fighting, the strife, the splits, the murder, the bloodshed. Now, sin has a price tag, and it is death. And we know that uh, everlasting torment awaits those that um, don't find forgiveness through the Lord Jesus. We don't have to experience it under, to, to avoid it. We don't even have to really understand it. Just know it's bad, I'm not going there. I'm going, to, I'm going to choose the way of righteousness. I'm going to choose the way of God today. Daily choices. And how we're going to make the right choice depends on whether we fear God. That's what Joshua said to the people. Choose you this day. And they said, oh, we will. And he said, well, fear the Lord then. Fear the Lord then. Then we're not arguing with him about it. I think I might turn back there. You'll see it. It's quite interesting. We will. We will fear the Lord, they said. I'll go to Joshua. Back to 24. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then on to verse 16, the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord. To serve other gods? We wouldn't do that. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage who did those great signs in our sight. And preserved us in all the way that we went. And among all the people through whom we passed, then the Lord drove out from before us all the people. See, they, they had been in the promised land for some time and they had seen the victory after victory after victory after victory. Taken city after city, town after town, village after village, driving out the enemies, possessing the land, piece by piece by piece. The people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. They said, We are witnesses. Now therefore, he said, Put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will, we will serve and his voice we will obey. Let me just do a Davy paraphrase. He just said, Okay, you said you fear God, you'll do whatever he says. He said, All right, put the foreign gods away then. Get rid of your idols. And then they answered and said, Amen. We will fear the Lord. We will serve God. He just finished saying, Well, get rid of your idols then. Let's keep reading. Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the Lord of God, took a large stone, set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it is Heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, each to his own inheritance. Joshua died. Cut a long story short. Over a period of time. They didn't get rid of their foreign gods. They started to uh, forsake the Lord. Not by choice, by not fearing they wanted to serve God. Yes, we will. They made oaths. They made covenant. Wrote it down. It's not as though they wanted to stray from God. But why didn't they obey? See, Jesus said, I will manifest myself. I will make myself real to those that obey. See, God's a jealous God. A spouse, husband, wife, lover, should be 
faithful to each other. So the Bible says, be the husband of one wife. Vice versa. On half a dozen. <laughs> be faithful to each other. But if you start going after other lovers, there's going to be a problem with the relationship. And this is a problem with the idols. Is there was a problem with them and the Lord. The relationship was strained because they were starting to do things, have other lovers, other things they loved, like trusted in, obeyed. They served their idols. What's an idol? Something that you like, something that takes all your attention, you, what you think about 24-7. It can be anything. God wants to be number one. And in being number one, it means he's involved in everything. It doesn't mean you don't have a life. In all the relationships in the whole world, apart from God, you know, in, in relationships, she's number one relationship with me. She's not two or three or four down. That wouldn't, that wouldn't uh, go well with the relationship. And use that in Aaliyah, she'd certainly let me know that's not going to go well with the relationship. <laughs> Aaliyah, she's not backward and coming forward. But it just doesn't work. Wouldn't have survived. I wouldn't have survived. <laughs> I'd been warned right from the start what had happened to me if I went the wrong direction. Strict warnings. But God does warnings too. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. No, have no other gods. You know, all those things. So why do folks go after other gods? Because they're not fearing God. Mm-hmm. See, there's a fear we have. Now, we have God in the middle of us. We've often said if it wasn't for God, we may not have lasted. But we learn to love God, learn to fear God, and respect each other. Hold short accounts. We get upset with each other sometimes. Hallelujah. But we don't hold on to it for days on end. We sometimes dilly-dally around for a while. And later on... <coughs> sorry. And then you feel a deal because the other person said sorry first. But, you know what I mean? Humble yourself. Listen, you know. I lost it. Sorry. It angry you. Not your fault. I was just carrying on. Short account. Don't let it drag on and on and on and on and on. Lyra's worried there a while back that she said to me, one day she said, I don't know, I think, I think, um, I don't remember what she said. Is it possible that men can have, what's it, women have halfway through their life? What's that called? Menopause. Midlife crisis where you, menopause. She said, I know men don't have menopause, but is it something similar that can happen to guys? I looked at it. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, you've been... <laughs> when you've been carrying on, I think you're having some midlife crisis. Was, but then I started thinking about it. I thought, that's not good. <laughs> what have I been doing? You're getting towy. You used to be really patient. You're getting towy. You're getting on edge. So I had to listen and think. Okay. Now, think of our relationship with God. There's something that, that, that's caused me to be towy with God. I'm not listening anymore. I'm not obeying. I'm following after other things. I want him to come in and give me a, some guidance. Choose you this day whom you'll serve. Hey, I'm supposed to be number one. But see, if, if you stay tender, confess your sins, get that out quickly. Sorry, Lord, I don't want things between us. I, yes, I've been focusing all my time on doing that or whatever it is. It can be anything. I don't need to, need to do a list. We're wise enough to know, you know it could be a job, it could be a kids, it could be a spouse, it could be a health, it could be a, it could be a hair. And if, you, if it takes you an hour each morning to do your hair, I mean, you know, cut it back to half hour, 20 minutes. Unless your hair's... Whatever. But you know what I mean? If, if, if half of your day's in the mirror, well, maybe you're the idol. Some, it's true. Some people have themselves as their idols. They just can't get over themselves. Can't stop thinking about themselves. Can be in a negative way. That's where depression comes from. They can't get themselves off the line. I just don't know how I've got a survival of my mum's against me, my dad's against me, my wife thinks I'm nuts. Midlife crisis. Oh, God. Wake up next morning. Oh, God. Midlife crisis. What am I going to do? Thinking about me, 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 me. Instead of thinking about how can I bless somebody? How can I bless my wife? Get out, lace yourself out of bed. Make yourself a wife a cup. Do something for somebody. Pray for someone. Get yourself off your mind. That's the best way to handle depression. Start worshipping God, praising God. You can't be too depressed for too long when you start praising the one who made the stars. Gives you your next breath. Makes the beautiful flowers that you see when you go outside your door in the morning. Wow, and the bigger, 
party at the cool. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Get your mind off yourself. Uh, some people are so addicted to work, they just workaholics. Become, can become an idol. Um, can't, they're just so busy serving their family, they've got no time for God. They just serve their family and their kids and their spouse day in, day out. They just get out of bed and they start and they just flop back into bed at midnight. Totally exhausted. Why? I'm serving my family, Lord. Yeah, but you didn't give me no time today. Didn't even acknowledge I was there. Oh, yeah, but God, I've got to love my family. You first, family second. Yeah, you got them first. Me, not second, third, fourth, fifth. I don't even think I'm there. I don't even think I'm on the ladder. But you go to church on Sundays and say, Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're the one, you're my lover, you're the best for me, you're the best for me. Then that's it for another week. Idols. Say idols. Idols, idols something you think about. Like, trust. Something else where you're, you're pulling it. Putting your passion into it. Now, if you find God's will and purpose for your life, you'll be passionate about that. You'll be good at it. You can focus your time on it. But you can pull away at any time to worship and to serve Him and to spend some time on the Word and just hear what God has to say. When you love someone enough, you will pull away from anything. You'll even say, hey, listen, now I'm cancelling that appointment because uh, I have my, my spouse, in the case of it's God even, uh, has need of me. Remember Jesse the Planner said that one time in prayer he heard the Lord he could, he could feel and hear the spirit weeping. And he thought, God, oh, I know you. He, he knew that something was not right with God and finished up getting the ear of God. And he had to tell his, his uh, staff that, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going aside. I'm pulling aside. I'm uh, going out of the office. And he went and worshipped and praised God for a while and said, God, you know, I feel as though that you're having a bad day or something. Something's wrong. So I'm just going to worship you. And after a while, he felt that God, God breathed relief, a sigh of relief. And the Lord said, thank you, Jesse. So my children have been disobedient to me today. I was getting, I was getting God... Making him feel sad. Isn't that amazing? So he had a friend in Jesse. God can have a friend in you, a friend in me. He loves us all the same, you know. His love is equal. But he can't show his love the same to everybody because it's not received. You have to cooperate. You have to receive of that love. And then when you receive of that love, that touches his heart. You receive more, it touches him more. And it's reciprocating motion. Lovers just want to be with each other. That's what God wants. He doesn't want to be, you to be so consumed with him that you've got no time for anything else. Heaven, apparently, according to the prophets, those that can see, said heaven's about half fun, play, and half learning. But it's fun learning, so it's all fun. But you learn through eternity. Learn about the ways and the kingdom and serve each other, and then the rest of the time it's just fun. Isn't amazing? God's a fun God. God's a happy God. So, he said, you're going to have to do away with your idols. You say you're not going to forsake the Lord and you're going to serve the Lord as for me and my house. When Joshua said it, he said it with conviction, meaning we're going to serve him. Whatever God wants, that's what we're doing. They may say it and give lip service to it, but Josh, Joshua said, yeah, can you do it? He, he can see they had idols. He said, well, if you're going to do that then, I believe your intentions, but if you are going to do it, deal with your idols. That was the last thing John said. You've got Gospel of John. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, just before uh, Jude and Revelation, he said, my little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. God doesn't keep us from idols. Maybe when we're baby Christians, he tries to move them away and shows us what they are. But we, as we grow, have to keep ourselves free from idolatry, idols, idol worship. It doesn't have to be a statue we bow down to. It can be, it can be something that you devote your time and your attention and your love, and God sees that. And God feels that. And that's what hurts his heart. So when we know that God wants something from us, we have to just do it by faith. There's a scripture in Philippians chapter 4, it says rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. When you're in the midst of a testing trial, it's not easy to rejoice. You've almost got to pull aside and just by choice be happy and start to think of happy thoughts and just go outside and do something and think of something else and get yourself into a place of joy. God doesn't want us to be downcast. As the psalmist said, why are you downcast, my soul? Why are you downcast? Trust in God. Meaning, you don't need to be downcast. God loves you. God's with you. He sees what your enemies are doing. He hears all their lies and their taunts and their jeers. Trust in God. Why are you sad? Pick yourself up. And that was the strength that David had. David, a man after God's heart. David was very similar to God in the fact that he never stayed down. He got the gripes. You see that in the psalms. He was honest. He never held his feelings back. 
But by the end of the psalm, normally he's praising God again, or at least the next psalm. He's back on top again. The life would get him down. Everyone's against him. Everyone's chasing him. God, break that beat. But then he'd be worshipping again. He'd forgive him and then off he'd go again. It's okay to have ups and downs, but you can't, don't stay down. Because in the end, you're going you're gonna to grovel around and that, that can become an idol. Self-pity. You know self-pity? Sorry for yourself. Feeling sorry for yourself. This generation is full of people who feel sorry for themselves. You look at them the right way. Oh, sorry. You bump them on the, on the way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. When, when Leo and the Kiwis came to Australia, one of the most surprising things they heard, apparently, about me being there when they first came, was what's everyone saying sorry all the time? Sorry, sorry, much. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because they're always worried about what the other person thinks. I can't let them think that I want them to harm them, so I'll say sorry. They just end up being a sorry bunch. Clean? Afraid of people? Afraid of everyone's opinions? Don't worry about what God thinks, I'm worried about what everyone else thinks. There's lots of ways to be in bondage to idols. Your brain can be an idol. If you can't work it out, if I can't understand it, no, no. I'm a logical thinker. Some people like that. They get themselves so locked in, if they can't logically work it out, one plus one equals two, no, that's it. They reject it. Well, you're never going to get to know God being that way. You're never going to get in a relationship for it to work unless you're that way as well, because you never put your spouse out, will you? It's impossible. You're just going to have to just love them and just, it's just the way they are. And, if you try to change them, you know it won't work. So just, just go with it. You loved them in the beginning anyway. Even when they had those funny ways, just, just go with it. And that's how we've got to be with our relationship with God. We're going to have to go with him. Find out what he's wanting today. Find out what his word says. Put ourselves in remembrance of what his word says. You get yourself downcast. Pick yourself up. If you find this bitterness starting to creep in, unforgiveness starting to creep in, get it sorted out. It's not about feelings. It's not about feeling that I don't know if I feel like it or they deserve it. Too bad. Do it. Otherwise you're going to get yourself tripped up in unforgiveness and you're going to get yourself in the devil's snare and he'll take you out. Amen? Many sick among, among us and many got rotten bones and everything else because of envy, strife and all those wicked things. I know when I got sick there a while back. And... Uh, I can't exactly remember the circumstance. One of my sons was saying, oh, you got sick? I said, yeah, I got the strife with my wife. I knew as soon as I got sick what the cause was. I repented of that, but I had to suffer with it for some days. It took some days to get over it. You start to learn that there's a path. You start to divert from that path. You start to expose yourself to the enemy. And as we start to grow up, you just can't harbour things. You're going to have to take, make shorter and shorter and shorter accounts and get to the stage even if someone says something to you that's not even true learn to brush it off and don't take it personally you're going to have to do it get yourself off your mind and start growing up in Christ Jesus and think about what God thinks he sees, he hears even if no one else understands he does he's a judge, he'll sort it out all lies come to the surface eventually all lies you don't have to tell everyone yeah but it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me there may be a time for that, but generally not for the believer. Let God vindicate. He'll show. And don't drop hints, though. A few Facebook posts. Drop a few hints so they know that you are the innocent one. No, no. Totally leave it with God. Totally. Amen? Let God handle it. He'll handle it. He'll sort it out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen.